you're behind the Windows activation. You say it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> um, everything's a matter of perspective. So tell the story of that. What's Windows activation? What? Uh, how'd you get involved? So they came to me late in the XP ship process. I, I don't know if the beta had gone out. I don't think the beta had gone out yet, but they had intended to take the office activation code and then adapt it to Windows and add activation to Windows. But whoever was responsible for doing it had slipped it enough times that it wasn't going to happen. And so I had kind of a reputation for being able to fix things quickly. So they came to me and said, can you get this done in time for XP? I don't know, but I'll try. So with the help of the guys that were doing the DRM stuff on the DRM side and the research guys doing the math for the product keys and everything else, we cranked it out in time for XP. And I don't know what it actual impact is for revenue, but I imagine it's substantial when you start enforcing license keys. I wonder what it is. I don't know. Because it's also annoying. It is, especially if you have to phone activate. And that was just the case that we had to carry with us as an albatross around our neck where you've got to pass data up to the clearinghouse, the backend systems that are going to approve your key, you've got to tell it all your hardware parameters, like how much memory and hard drive space and the various things the hardware key is bound to, as well as the product key. And you've got encoded in letters and numbers that somebody's willing to read in over a phone. And if you think doing product activation is painful over the phone, could you imagine being the person that worked on the other end of that line? I mean, that's just got to be a mind-numbing job to listen to product keys for eight hours a day. Yeah, one of the challenges with Windows and it's been a frustration point for me, but I, I understand from a design perspective, it's very difficult, is so many different kinds of people use Windows. But uh, it's been frustrating how over time, Windows has more and more leaned into the direction of like, the not, not the power user, I should say. Which is why sort of Linux has always been really wonderful. But from an activation perspective or from any kind of configuration it's been it's been a it's been a source of a lot of frustration yeah one of my more popular episodes of late has been why you can't move the windows taskbar and yeah. i had no idea but the outrage is palpable amongst people that you yes. put it on the left or top and you can't anymore and it is an affront to their existence and i understand it to a certain extent well, it's one of the main reasons i really just dislike there's a lot of aspects about windows 11 i dislike one of which is like you can't customize things as much about the position of the taskbar, just basic customization. Can we just configure stuff? Because there's going to be a small contingent of power users that are just going to enjoy the hell out of this operating system. If you just give them that option, it costs you nothing. Just give them that freedom. Well, it does cost, right? Because the freedom to put the start menu on the left or the top or the right really increases the complexity of the code that renders the start menu and lays out the tabs and does all the things. And now it's a much larger surface for bugs and it's a much larger piece of code to maintain. So you probably need more developers or another developer or some portion of a developer's time. So the question becomes at what point is it still worth it to satisfy the niche needs of a small set of users? And I, I that, those decisions weren't mine to make, but I can see it from both sides. I think just like the people who make movies and insert very nuanced details that only a small number of people will realize are there, that's going to really pay off. There's a kind of reputation that builds over time that has a very powerful ripple effect that I think it has, it, it has so many benefits including for hiring great software engineers. It's like you create this aura of a place uh, that puts love into every detail, that puts, that really takes care of the power users, that takes care of the developers. And I think Microsoft is more and more moved in that direction with GitHub and acquiring GitHub and just taking care of the developers. But on the Windows interface side, Come on, some customization. With you know, with VS Code, you can customize everything. Why, why can't we customize the start menu? All right. Anyway, uh, and the taskbar, um, and really every aspect of the Windows interface. I don't. I don't. I. Maybe you're right. Maybe it increases the complexity of the code. I suspect that's just not the case. I bet it was. I bet it was a scheduling decision when they rewrote the start menu. I think they rewrote it because it's different than the old taskbar. Mm -hmm. 
And somebody was tasked with, you've got to deliver this set of functionality. And if I cut out putting it on the left and the top and the right and two rows of tabs and all the other cool features, I can deliver it four months sooner. And I'm not saying that's the right decision, but I'm guessing that might be the kind of thing that motivates it. And they're on such a different release schedule now. It used to be, you won't see much craftsmanship unless somebody owns a component for a long time and it settles to a point that then you can work on and polish it, right? But if it's always churning and the UI is changing every release, it's never going to get that level of polish. Although I think the UI is pretty nice, but. I, yeah, it, it is nice, but I think there, I think it's, I just don't think it's a scheduling thing. I think it's a craftsmanship thing. Just like you with a, with a task manager, if there's a guy or a girl in there who take ownership of it, who have like passion, like for them, it's a thing that they take pride in uh, over a period of time. They can like by themselves in a short amount of time create something truly wonderful, right? And like I, I, I think if you have large software engineering teams with managers and sc scheduling of meetings and all this kind of stuff, yeah, okay, then then your argument applies. But if the if you allow the flourishing of individuals that create cool shit and like their own sort of the side project, which Google is very good, they've at. tried that, right? Google, yeah, yeah, like have fun with it, like do some crazy stuff and then we'll integrate it. We'll we'll try to integrate into the whole ecosystem. I don't know. Yeah, uh, because uh, like to me, <laughs> there's, it's such a great joy from an individual developer to create something like customization of the start menu of the taskbar, because you know that millions of people are going to use it, uh, the, the taskbar. And then you know that thousands, tens of thousands of developers might be using to customize even little subtle aspects of the taskbar. You know how much joy you create, you give to people to customize, to have some kind of JSON thing where you customize something about the taskbar. Okay, but how do you respond to the Steve Jobs aspect of giving you customization implies that we couldn't figure out the right answer for you? Or maybe there is no right answer and all four answers are equally right. I have no idea. But. Right. Uh, I think I've always, uh, I, I'm glad Apple exists. It's a beautiful thing. and That ideal of design is wonderful. But I always thought that the, the Windows creates the contrast. Like the point of Windows is to be the operating system that works on all kinds of devices that just is much is supposed to be much more open. And they've moved towards that direction more and more with Windows subsystems for Linux. It's just this whole developer friendly ecosystem. It it the interface should be in the spirit of that, I think. Right. But but I do think that there could also be security vulnerabilities that created with that. It's not just the complexity of the code, because Windows is just under attack. Yeah. <laughs> it's very difficult to keep it secure.